Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Small Data with T, where we are passionate about the power of small data in healthcare. I am your host, Tanasia Gonzalez, but you can call me T. Data has certainly changed the game in healthcare. Big data has blown the roof off, but small data, now that's the future. Small data allows us to dive deep into the key insights and take quick, customized action to achieve phenomenal results in performance and quality improvement. Let's explore this today. Thanks so much for joining us. If you have any questions for me or any of my guests, feel free to reach out to me at tgonzalez at eima-inc.com. Enjoy the show. Let's go. Welcome to Let's Talk Small Data with T, where we explore the power of small data in healthcare. And thank you for tuning in. Today, I'm joined by Joe DeBias and Will Chung, coming to us from Long Island, New York. Joe is Director of Food and Service Nutrition Services at Long Island Jewish Hospital, Long, excuse me, Long Island Jewish Valley Stream. Um, Will is owner and operator of 99 Spoons New York City, providing self-serve robotic kiosks in New York City. I'm so happy to have you guys on here. I've really been looking forward to this talk because I think what you're doing is so unique and really exciting because who doesn't like ice cream? And I think um, bringing that to the experience in the hospitals um, is just a gift from God because I've been on the professional side and the personal side in hospitals and having something like this would definitely make the mood lighter, make it easier to deal with both as an employer and a patient or, you know, a visitor. Uh, you know, I've had uh, family members within the Northwell system. I've worked within the Northwell system and other hospitals, obviously. I love what you guys are doing. Really looking forward to hearing what you're doing, what the plans are for the future. So I will just uh, give Joe a little moment to tell us a little bit about himself. What's your background? Where are you coming from? What are you passionate about? Well, I grew up on Long Island as well, uh, as living here now. Um, I spent, uh, after I went to Cornell for hotel restaurant management, um, I thought I wanted to be a chef. So I went and worked for uh, a guy named Ming Tsai right out of college. And he was uh, at the time on Food Network. Um, I slowly realized that I didn't want to work for a celebrity chef uh, <laughs> because of a lot of politics there. Um, so I went and I ended up moving to New York City in my early 20s, got really lucky and got a chef job when I was only 23 nice. and uh, had a long standing passion to have my own restaurant. I was very lucky at an early age. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. And that was always own my own restaurant. Um, then I kind of set a goal for myself to open and establish something before I was 30. So on my 29th year here on earth, I opened my own restaurant. And uh, it was in Manhattan's East Village for um, just shy of 10 years. Um, and then we also had a small sandwich shop for about three years. San Hurricane Sandy kind of did that one in. Mm. Uh, big learning lesson there. Um, and that kind of moved me into then going to work for John George and John Frazier, uh, more in a chef environment again, working for you know corporate teams and things of that nature. Uh, and then, then I got into my early 40s and I decided to start a family and that's when my lifestyle uh, needed to change and through a couple of different you know uh, lucky strikes my wife looking on Indeed which I don't think I've ever been on Indeed in my entire life uh, but when my wife was helping me look for a different career path other than being in a kitchen uh, you know 24 7 seven days a week um, she happened upon Northwell and um, we had moved to Floral Park, which is only about 10 minutes from here. Yeah. And uh, I never even knew Valley Stream Hospital was here in the first place. I didn't really know anything about Northwell, to be frank. Um, but all I knew is that they hired a Michelin star chef and they were starting this food transformation. Um, and I was pretty intrigued by that. So then I got to meet that chef, Bruno, and um, I got to meet the team here at the, the site. Um, and I took a kind of a leap of faith, as they did on me as well, because I'd only been a chef. I'd never been a director. I'd never worked in really corporate role like this. Um, so there was a leap of faith taken on both sides. And four years later, 
I'm happy to say that it's it's really worked out. I found my niche here. I'm really passionate about not only about food service because I've obviously done it my entire life, but um, I'm I'm really passionate about systems. I'm passionate about workflow. I'm passionate about standardization and optimization of what we do in the culinary space, but mm. also outside of that. So how do we build kitchens? How do we um, make more efficient workspaces? How do we spend better money on equipment? Um, and and that kind of dovetailed us, I guess, into why we're talking today, you know, is always trying to push the model and always trying to kind of break it, you know, mm -hmm. as, as people like to say uh, these days. And I feel like that's kind of what I've always been is a, is a healthcare disruptor. <clears throat> because when I got here, I've always, I've always been told uh, that's the way we do it. Yes. And, or that's the way we've always done it. And I hate <laughs> I hate that statement. I hate both of those statements. And if I'd never uh -huh. heard it again in my life, I would be happier. <laughs> um, but that's yeah. kind of what motivates me on a daily basis is yeah. being told it can't be done or it, it won't be actualized. It's a great idea, but it, nobody right. has time for that or money for that. Um, and I always feel like the way I approach things is I try to give as much as I take. So if I want to take away something, I try to give back something that's better. You know, so whether it's take away a couple of employees and then come out with a better product on the end, you know, so that's kind of, uh, that, that's my background. Um, you know, I'm thank looking you. forward, looking forward to staying in this career for a while. So, <laughs> yes, thank you. How long have you been with Northwell right now? Uh, it's so? actually four years this Saturday. Okay. Yeah. Well, happy yeah. anniversary. <laughs> and, uh, Thank you for joining us. We, I say us because, you know, I've been in healthcare for over 25 years and, um, Definitely need that disruption, that transformation. I love your story. Very intrigued by your story and what I see uh, on the internet about you. And I love your passion uh, around food, you know, and really bringing something good about it to uh, serve the human spirit and human nature within the healthcare space. So love that. Thank you. Will, um, I've always admired your entrepreneurial spirits. <laughs> Uh, and your your work ethic. So I'll take Thank give you. you a couple of minutes to just give us your background. You know where you're coming from. What are you passionate about? Go for it. Um. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Um. Thank well, my background here. is um hospitality. Ever since I was uh, graduated from uh, Stony Brook with business management, and even when I was in when I was attending Stony Brook, I was in um the hotel business for. You know, started off as a bookkeeper and, you know, front desk and then that's eventually assistant manager and general manager and running a family business. It was a family owned hotel. But um, throughout the whole process, I've always focused on innovating and customer service and finding different ways to make customers happy and improve their stay. So customer satisfaction, you know. Uh, memorable moments at their stay has always been a priority for me throughout you know when I was a front desk clerk to when I was a general manager so um, that was always been the focus of my career and I was in the hospitality business for 25 years and it was limiting because I was on the bottom floor like they dealing directly with customers and I could see you know um, concerns and things that customers want and mm -hmm. with my limited just having one property limited ability to make to make change and you know a lot of times things aren't uh, with that situation you can't you can't make the changes necessary so eventually we I, I left hospitality um and now i'm in ice cream and <laughs> the, the great thing about 99 spoons is its flexibility and the fact that I could place the the, the machines, their yeah. so, automatic robotic soft serve vending machines, you could cater to the client and the customers, like the hotel, uh, like the hosp the hospital, if they if they feel that they, they want uh, a premium gelato, we could do premium gelato. If they if if one could want a healthier option, we could do a healthier froyo or. You know, our machines can do toppings and syrups. We could cater uh, nice. to increase satisfaction and, and, and you know, the happiness and smiles to our customers. 
bringing happiness to people. I love that you wrote that in your video. Um, yeah. That's wonderful. Um, I also feel very passionate about improving lives. I do it specifically through data, you know, and uh, building up infrastructure within hospitals and healthcare space to really dive deep into the small data to really understand where we need to take action. Uh, so, I wanted to have you guys on this show to uh, expose what you're doing uh, to my listeners, um, because I really feel like, yeah, the data is there that shows that folks in the hospitals are just not happy in general with the food and you don't want to be there in the first place. So it really contributes negatively to the mental health of the patients and of the staff as well. Um, and happy staff, happy patients, you know? So they are closely related. Um, so I really think contributing these kiosks and making them self-serve and you can empower the patients to choose and make choices and, you know, I love it. Um, so let me ask both of you, whoever wants to jump in first and respond, what brought you guys together? And exactly what is it that you're doing at Northwell? with the ice cream vending machines, mm -hmm. I mean. <laughs> well, I think that, um, you know, Will approached us from what I remember um, nice. with an initial pitch, um, which I can appreciate because I was a small business owner too, you know, and you got to go out and hit the pavement, so to speak. And absolutely, um, he had a lot of passion for what he was doing, obviously. And he, and he was very, um, he was very intent on the fact that he thought it could be a great supplement to the environment we're in. Mm -hmm. He'd already expressed as well that he had been in a couple other healthcare institutions already. Um, and I'm always one to to take a chance on something different. And um, I'm in a union environment here. So adding in things um, in the food service space is very difficult conversation always because it's who's going to make it, who's going to attend it, who's going to clean it, who's going to stock it. Um, it's all of those type of things. Um, so when I looked at the machine and the way that will has the business set up it was very it's, it's very user friendly sorry about all the bonging going on here um okay. the, the the system is very user friendly and it doesn't put any upfront cost to the facility so it, it lowers his barrier to entry big time because okay. i think that any vending space that we've worked with if we have to purchase the machine or if we have to stock it ourselves that's where a lot of the the back and forth conversations kind of kill those projects because oh. no one wants to kind of find that money. Um, and it's really, you know, it's a healthcare facility. So the primary goal is to spend as much money on taking care of people and mm -hmm. not so much money on the supporting things. Right. Totally. Um, which I've gotten over time and I understand now better. So when we speak about things like Will's machine, you know, we started in our cafeteria, which our cafeteria is not exactly ideally placed. So we're kind of now entertaining the idea of putting in the lobby, which I think that, <clears throat> you know, through the experience we've had together, um, my thought was employees would be using it a lot more, mm -hmm. but I think that we're missing out the potential that the guests and the, and the, and the visitors are really the ones that are going to be the primary market for that machine. Right. Um, you know, and I think that that's kind of, you know, stuff that, Will has been great with working with us too, you know, you know, suggested lowering the price. We've lowered the commission. Like we were finagling things like that in order to make the model mm -hmm. work for both of us. Um, but I think that's kind of, that's how we did it. And, and for me, I never bring in any idea into Valley Stream without thinking about how it could be shared throughout the system. So I don't think that anybody else in uh, my position throughout the company wouldn't think the same thing about a machine like this. And some of us have potentially much more lucrative spots for Will than I do because of foot traffic um, and because of general location in the buildings, right? So if you go to like LIJ main campus, there's there could be thousands of people through that lobby in a day, you know? So the capture rates are a lot higher. You know, he might have thank to refill the machine like that daily. Totally. Well, thank you for that. So, Will, yeah. actually, before we go any further, let's let's get a little more insight into the actual machine. Like, what exactly is in the machine? How does it work? You know, just give us a, a quick intro to that. So, well, the machine um was um brought in from Ninety Nine Spoons, which is um Nick Gates, who 
um, is a pioneer in bringing frozen desserts to the United States. His previous business was, um, his previous company was uh, bringing a Froyo machine into healthcare facilities before, but it was, um, uh, it was the first, it was his first idea. So it was a really big unit, you know, with big robotic arms and taking a lot of power and it didn't work out as, as planned. And this is the fruition of the next iteration of it instead of, um, a humongous unit that takes up a lot of space and sucks up a lot of juice. It's more of a compact, but better, in my opinion, machine. You got a huge touch screen. So uh, either an adult or a child or patient can tap and see exactly what they want, tap exactly which toppings and syrups they want and customize it to their liking and purchase it. And it makes it right there on the spot within 20 to 30 seconds. So it's very intuitive, right? Easy to use. Very easy to use, big pictures of okay. the toppings and everything. And the fact that what brought me to bring it, uh, have the idea of bringing it to the hospitals is, you know, a lot of hospital, a lot of cafeterias or eating spaces, they don't have, like Joe says, it's union, doesn't have staff 24 hours a day. And the appeal of this is that the machine is automated. So whether it's three o'clock in the afternoon or three o'clock in the morning. If a nurse is stressed out or a doctor or employee is stressed out, had a rough day, they could go to this machine and pick exactly what they want on their ice cream and it'll have a, the light for the next couple of minutes. Nice. It makes me think of the water cooler. Is it also similar to that? You have the water cooler conversations. You have the self-serve kiosk conversations going on. You know, especially at 3 a.m., like, ah, I just need to get me a quick fro yell. Boom, put on some, yeah, add cherry, add more syrup. And let me tell you about my day. Um, does a machine give you insight in terms of calorie content, like nutritional information for what's being served? Like calories, how many calories, what are the ingredients? Does it do that or doesn't get into that level of detail? It is slated to do that. The software is uh, constantly, okay. constantly being updated and okay. uh, improved. Uh, there is plans to have uh, calorie, calorie content for okay. each uh, topping and each syrup and the ice, the ice cream itself. Nice. I love it. Um, thank you for that. So, Joe, you were telling me about kind of the intended um, outcomes, like the reasons why you thought it was a good opportunity to place the machines in, in the hospital, you know, have, have those come to fruition? Were there any unexpected things that happened with these machines? Any unexpected findings that you can share? Well, I think um, we missed the mark on original placement. And I, I told Will that, frankly, I think that the cafeteria um, from mm -hmm. the outside looked like the great spot for it because we don't you know to will's point don't sell any uh desserts there um not frozen desserts anyway um but again you know our cafeteria suffers from location you know so it's in our basement uh ground floor um we don't even capture all of our employees in the cafeteria at the moment so the idea that we would get all of our guests down there too i think is a little far school and it's kind of bearing itself out in the numbers um i would have already moved the machine to the lobby uh, but the lobby is under construction at the moment, which is constantly happening at this building. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's, the construction slated to wrap up, uh, I think, during this month or next month. And I've already committed to Will that we're going to be moving the machine upstairs. And we had a former gift shop up there, mm -hmm. which our uh, which my boss has kind of given us a blessing to maybe flesh out into a little um, vending kiosk. So my idea was possibly to put a coffee vending machine a fresh Ooh. food vending machine side by side with will's machine so it would be this little kind of uh lantern effect to, for the flies you know to come to and and oh, get I a little bit more. you know so if i was interested in just getting a coffee i go and pop in to get coffee and go oh wow there's ice cream too or yes. I wanted ice cream. Yeah. you know i want ice cream i go pop in and i say oh they have fresh food so like it can kind of continue the conversation for the guests throughout the day and throughout right. maybe even the week that they're there visiting family. Um, we do a lot of inpatient stuff here and, and outpatient stuff. So we have uh -huh. dialysis and things of that nature where people are coming, they're not admitted, but they're bringing a family member, they're bringing a caretaker, they're bringing a driver, whatever it may be. We have tons of vendors in the space. And totally. I think 
that is where we're going to really start to see an uptick in the, in the traffic. Um, that's my hope is, and, and again, I'm, <clears throat> I'm not a big believer in putting things in and then just giving up on it right away. And I, I'm, I'm glad that Will's committed to that kind of Same process. Here. You know, yeah. we could, we could have already said, Hey, you know what, the not working, forget it. Um, but I thought it was just like, we, we need to examine better locations before we say that it's not the right fit. Totally. What you're describing to me is what I've been in for the last 15 years, which is continuous quality improvement. And right. it's like taking those small tests of change, you know, so let's put it here. Let's see how it works out. Okay. Right. What worked, what didn't work? All right, let's tweak it. Let's pivot. Okay. Maybe we need a new location. Maybe we need to do X, Y, Z. And before you know it, you found that sweet spot and yep. then you can replicate that you know, right. across whatever. So I love that. Have you guys had any feedback from staff, patients, visitors, any specific feedback from folks? Because that'd be I mean, really cool you got like Yeah, a, I, we definitely response. get a lot of feedback, you know, and, and I think that one of the things I get a lot of feedback on is I didn't even know it was here. So that was part of the reason we started <laughs> to look at better locations, right? Yeah. Um, but as far as anyone who's actually eaten the product, there I have not gotten a single complaint about it. You know, honestly, they okay. could, everybody loves it. When Will comes down to refill the machine, he gives out free samples. <laughs> um, he really does his best. You know, he changed up to pink one one season for the Barbie movie. So oh my god, you know, I love yeah, that. Yeah, try to keep try to keep things relevant, and and yeah. you know, I feel like once the lobby gets reopened, it, we're gonna back it up with some promo material and get people out there and kind of. Do a little bit of more of a relaunch for for the for the machine being there in the first place kind of um, like a did you know kind of campaign. yeah exactly you know we, we kind of soft opened it if you will you know uh -huh. and now, now we're going to do a grand opening you know now that we know that it's something we're committed to and we want to see really work Very nice right um, and we're yeah. always uh we're always looking to uh innovate and try to uh cater to the the, the customers so uh, we experiment with different flavors you know, mm -hmm. we can always expand. Well, we we've done strawberry. We've mm -hmm. had requests for chocolate. We're uh, contemplating putting a QR code on the screen so you can maybe have everybody pick the next flavor. And you know, the wow. Uh, you know, that's something that I've been thinking for a little bit. So maybe we'll. Oh, we'll, you mean like like a like a like a, a poll. flavor like a poll? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like oh, like, should we do salted caramel or birthday cake or you know chocolate fudge brownie you know we have all these options because of the flexibility of the machine nice. you know the idea of cashless markets and automated machines and and things of that nature are no longer just you know science fiction of the 50s you know it's it's it is the next revolution you know we've talked about cashless cafeterias and things of that nature app-based cafeterias so there is an appetite to start to discuss how you go from your traditional institutional environment of uh, cafeterias to a more progressive style of cafe slash grab and go type you know yeah. more in the arena with the elbow and pans and things of that nature where it's very high quality stuff that's easy to access um at any time of the day and that's kind of where you know right. those machines fit fit in perfectly there is it's meant just for that you know to sort of complement um, not to track, but complement the business that's already existing, you know, and right, I think that's right. part of part of the little kabuki dance that everybody has to do is we're not going to, we're probably not going to put a sandwich vending machine in there because we make good sandwiches, you know what I mean? So it's, yeah. we want to put, the, we want to, we want to draw in the high-end businesses that are not things that we particularly have the, the opportunity to, to get into, you right. know, so pastry and, and desserts and stuff like that is still one of our things that we're not able to do as well yet because we don't really, we haven't dedicated resources to that. And I don't think, you know, frankly speaking, I don't think there's a lot of appetite to because so many people like will do it very well, you know, without a lot of, you know, I don't have to train anybody to use the machine. I don't have to stand right. out there and help people through the process. I don't have to make change for right. it. Right. You know, I don't have to refill it or anything like that. I don't even know when he's coming to refill, to be frank. You know, he does. So, you know, I mean, it could lean into the village. Yeah. You know, so. and, and, and honestly, for the building, you know, things that they could bring into the space that mm -hmm. are going to make even an incremental amount of money, um, whatever amount of money these days it is, it is, you know, that you can't shy away from even $100, $1,000, because 
a thousand dollars over 20 sites is more than a thousand dollars you know it that's kind of wow. the way we just think about things in the system is it's a system you know so if there's yeah. a good idea a good idea at one site it becomes a good idea for all of the sites spread you know? best practices yeah i yeah. think that's how, how we've done the food service revolution in our companies it started with one gentleman and it and then he made it into a village and now everybody everybody's mentality about what we do is completely changed right right a lot of the players have changed but we brought in the folks that that believe in the progress and believe in the, the evolution right no I love it I think it's very innovative and I love what you said that you know you could bring these types of products and vendors to, to complement or supplement what you're already offering um so that's awesome uh, I congratulate you on being a pioneer in that respect and like taking this on what are the future plans i know you said you were talking about placement um yeah. in general what are some of the future plans for these kiosks i would love to see things like this expand throughout the system right mm -hmm. um but i'm really committed to making it work at valley stream as well because i think that if i can't say to the other sites hey look what we do with this where's the intrigue going to be right so i think that Definitely. that's why i'm yeah. saying that improving the location is paramount for me now um improving the foot traffic to the machine the knowledge of it being there um so that's why i think that if we do a few preliminary things coming into next year we could really be talking about a healthy appetite for people to add the machine on their own you know right. without without me force feeding it to anybody because we you know fortunately in our company have a lot of site autonomy we're allowed to do <laughs> We do things within the scope of what we're trying to do, but we're all left with a great executive chef team and great creative mind at each facility. Um, but the one thing we all do buy into is high quality. You know, so oh. if it's high quality, it's high quality. And if and it, and I know for certain, like I said before, that ice cream and, and frozen desserts are a desert kind of environment for a lot of our cafeterias because it's a difficult thing. Like to Will's point, you got to have a big machine. You got to have a you know, there's a lot of things that go into having frozen. Yeah. yeah, they break down constantly. You know, <laughs> anything with a compressor <laughs> constantly yeah. breaking down, even if it's new. You know, right. that's just yeah. things that made these days. So, so, so on yeah. our side, uh, we've uh, we've gotten the attention of a big vending company, uh, one that has um has a contract with Northwell as well. Okay. So they we've been in talks. Uh, Ninety Nine Spoons has been in talks with their uh, their parent company and going through all the paperwork and all the all the red tape to um, have them on board and okay. possibly put um, 99 Spoons NYC or uh, 99 Spoons other operators in many Northwell locations. You know, once Beautiful. they're on board and we could we could expand from there and we've been to talks with other uh, Manhattan uh, hospitals and possibly putting one in Manhattan in the next couple of months. Nice. So. Yeah, I know uh, Northwell has a, a beautiful uh, website, and they're they're doing a lot of innovative things. Hopefully, one day we'll see. Uh, L -I -G. Like this, yeah. <laughs> Center. And you Valley know? Stream is our uh, kind of our uh, our test our test uh, subject. Yeah, your beta child or your yeah. beta hospital, right? Um, right? I love that you guys are in the. I've, uh, been, that, I've been that a lot over the four years. So. <laughs> I love it. You know, you, you being the pioneer, being the first. You know, you shake out all the kinks, and then finally, when you hit that sweet spot, you go, "Hey, look yeah. what we were able to accomplish!" And it can happen for you as well. You know, yeah, look at all the happy, uh, happy uh, people and all the happy. Yeah, people, I love. Right? I love those videos you have, uh, Will, on the Instagram account there of. You see the kids like operating the machine and the pictures and it's so nice. And I saw the pink, the Barbie one. The also, Barbie that one. Was really cute. Yeah, very nice. All right. So um, and we're coming towards the end. And I want to <laughs> thank you guys for your time. Um, I wanted to just uh, give you an opportunity, each of you, to tell my listeners, are there any specific calls to action or things you'd like people to consider or um, do more of in terms of this project? I, I generally get annoyed when people say technology is going to somehow solve the issue of labor. It's yeah. not. No. It will complement the labor if it's put in effectively and at the right time and at the right cost. Right. 
You know, like uh, you were saying, Michael Dowling said, you can never take the human out of the equation. I was, um, we had a conversation with Joe the other day about how our machine is, we're providing, you know, quality as opposed to a, a mediocre experience. You know, we're doing soft serve gelato and, you know, it's okay, even in the healthcare, even in the hospital, to have something a little more decadent as long as there's balance. So we have a, right. a portion control and provide still, you know, a smaller portion than a huge thing of Froyo, but, you know, the experience will be a more positive experience and it, it'll uh, improve the whole, ex uh, the whole visit. Right, I love you know, that. As opposed to maybe like a, a pack of dipping Dots for, and then you're like, okay, that was ice cream. Okay, what? And it was horrible. You know, this at least this I machine provides a, a a a premium option I with the that. balance. So actually, the first time I heard ice cream in the hospitals, I thought, <laughs> hmm, ice cream in the hospital, kind of an oxymoron, you know. And then you were saying, um, you know, we can improve the foot track. Tra uh, traffic amongst like the folks coming in for dialysis and i was thinking wait a minute ice cream dialysis <laughs> how do we balance yeah. that out uh yeah. so you know and, and i think that that conversation will was talking about i had brought up uh some work that the chef had done before i got to the company we serve junior's cheesecake now you would say to yourself holy crap how do you do that they okay. came up with a cheesecake bite essentially so it's like two bites worth of cheesecake but it's exactly the same recipes you get when you go to juniors and get a big old hunk of cheesecake so it's intended to really give you the same experience but by controlling the portion we're now not being irresponsible you know as far as being healthcare providers right so the idea of giving them the fat-free cheesecake though that's twice the size and doesn't have a good flavor i'm not going to eat that so now that's just a wasted product. I throw it in the garbage, you know, and then they want another dessert. So now I've hit, been hit twice in that meal period. That's a cost loser. So I'd rather buy the little more premium cheesecake, but the something that someone's going to eat because they're right. going to be like, wow, that tastes like the real thing. Because it is, you know, and yeah. it's even better. Than Jesus, so. you that reminds been. me, uh, yeah. uh, when my, every time my, you know, I have four children. So every time my wife, when she would uh, be pregnant and we're planning, you know, going to the hospital and having this baby, my wife was always like, we have to go to Northwell because of the carrot cake. You know, she, <laughs> she's looking forward to having the baby and then being in the hospital and having the carrot cake because it's delicious. You know, that it improves the experience, you know, the childbirth and labor and everything is a, is a very traumatic experience, but there's a positive All part about that. The food, right? Yeah, yeah. totally. I love that. And, but so in terms of like, this is America, like we do everything big, everything's yeah. going to be big, big, super size, you know? And, but when you were saying you get the junior's cheesecake and the portions are small, you have folks like purchasing 10 different, <laughs> 10 yeah. servings of that small portion. I mean, you have to have some self-control when you're yeah. at that machine. So you're not like, yeah, give me like 30 of these. Okay, but you're empowered to make those smarter choices. You know, we're always trying to get the patients to be uh, an active partner in their their own journey. You know, it's up to them to make those smart choices. But I love the fact that you guys make that available. Yeah, you know, to the, it's there. You can make that choice. I'm gonna have this one portion. Um, so currently, for the toppings and all. We only have a one topic serving side. You can't start tapping and get okay, like good, quadruple good. chocolate syrup. At you know? the machine, like, no, again, again. <laughs> no, okay. yeah. No. But anyway. All right, guys. So um, after this talk, folks may want to get in touch with you all, maybe ask you some questions or engage with you some kind of way. Are you okay with that? And Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Jokes. Okay. So what's the, I will put some information under the show recording but what's like the most the the preferred way for folks to get in touch with you all uh joe uh my, my business email if they have okay. jdebias at northwell got it yeah. i will pop that in there as well will what about you what's the best uh, for me my uh my website's up it's up and running it's a perfect way there's a uh, a form for you to fill out if you think that our uh, our machine will be perfect for your location 99 spoons nyc.com 
you just go in there it links us to our instagram so you can see uh -huh. and um gives a brief description of our machine and a little form for you to fill out we'd be happy to contact you and have a, a site visit and sit down and see if it's a good fit for us awesome all right so once again i want to thank you will and joe for joining me today thank you to my, to my listeners yes it was so nice talking with you all today to my listeners, thank you for joining in wherever you are in the world. To subscribe to the podcast, you can find us on Spotify, iHeartRadio, and tune in. Look up Let's Talk Small Data with T, no apostrophe. You can also visit eima-inc.com or emmainc.com and click on Let's Talk Small Data to learn more about the podcast. If you're interested in being on the show or know of someone who would be interested, please email me at tgonzalez at emma-inc.com. Have a wonderful day. And remember, unleash the power of your small data. It's your most valuable strategic asset. See you next time. This episode is brought to you by Effective Information Management specializing in healthcare small data and offering expertise that goes beyond technology. Visit www.eima-inc.com to learn more about Emma and the podcast, Let's Talk Small Data with